Thanks for watching Here to Stay TV, powered by Bridge Street. I'm Glenn Hausman, coming at you from the Global Business Travel Association's annual meeting here in San Diego. One of the big issues we're talking about is the changing tide of technology. So I have Mr. Andrew Sanders. He's the uh, technology expert with Data Art, and I am going to have him demystify the whole idea of blockchain. And no, it's not a 90s punk band. It's brand new technology. Andrew, I think there's a lot of confusion about what this is and what it actually means to hospitality. I, that's right, Glenn. I think there is a lot of confusion. First of all, you need to understand that it's not uh, cryptocurrency, it's not Bitcoin. A lot of people still ask about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, when I'm doing talks about uh, blockchain. So, uh, but cryptocurrency is based on blockchain technology, but blockchain technology has many different applications beyond cryptocurrency. So blockchain has been created to enable uh, entities which don't normally have a trusted relationship to be trusted. And it's done that because, um, because of uh, the original uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoins, that needed uh, um, to remove potentially third parties like banks, but now there's much more potential to remove third parties that, uh, that don't need to exist in a, in, a, in a trusted environment like blockchain can, can create. So how does this actually work? I, I, what confuses me is we've had all these traditional means of doing stuff, but this way blockchain breaks up information, sends it to all different parts of the web, similarly to the way information is, it's, is done now, but different? It's really, the, it's really, it's right, it's really <laughs> the beauty of it, because basically right now, most traditional databases are, there's one central custodian of, of, of the data. Mm -hmm. With blockchain, basically there are dozens, hundreds, potentially thousands of custodians of data called peers, and they're all deciding whether a transaction is, is it should be written to the blockchain. So each record that's written has a link to the preceding record, so therefore there's a, a chronological integrity to prove that it's, that it's written in a certain sequence, and therefore it's creating a chain of data, a block, and therefore hence the, hence the blockchain. Why is this better than traditional methods? Because as a novice that doesn't understand technology, well, if I know what block is before and what block is afterwards, can I just figure out a way to you know, scam the system? It's great, it's a great question. So all of these peers, of which there could be hundreds, mm -hmm. um, are basically making sure that everybody's in agreement with that each data that's written is, has integrity, that each data is, that's written is in the chronological order in which it can be. Is it, is it a standard system of code or are different blockchains done differently like cryptocurrencies might be different? Right, so another good question. So um, there are many different types of blockchain ecosystems. There's private mm -hmm. blockchains which are existing for commercial organizations right. typically. And there's public, public blockchains that basically are much more of a de democratic environment. And basically each blockchain has its own rules and uh, basically, and, and all the peers get to vote on, the, on those rules. So how does the hospitality industry, both in traditional hotels, service departments, and even suppliers to the business, leverage this technology to be more successful, and I suppose, um, safer with data transferring? It's not just a case of being safer with data, it's also a case that this is the way that we think the world is going. It's a transformational technology, which means that at some stage, you're going to have to get, you're gonna have to get on board with it. Oh, so, all right, so before we go on with that, it's a transformational technology. What would be something similar in the past that you felt is also transformational that people could use as a reference to understand where we're going in the future? It could be as big as the internet in the first place. Because really? really yeah, because um, it's, it's really is a it's considered to be a transformational technology. Now, no one really knows how it's going to look in, in five or 10 years time, of course, but basically the way that it's going to operate thanks to the internet now is that data can be, tran can be transferred across countries on, on, on in the, within the blockchain uh, ecosystem and um, each of the peers can get to vote on it. What do you mean by peers getting a vote on it? How does, how does that work? Okay, so within the blockchain, depending on what blockchain ecosystem exists, there are servers or nodes or computers all around the world, potentially dozens or hundreds of them, and they're all considered to be peers. Right. So in other words, uh -huh. they each have equality, okay? And depending on the rules that have been set up by the blockchain that's established, the peers get a vote on whether a record should be written to that blockchain. Right, okay. So. This is, this, is, this is not as easy as it sounds. I mean, you, you're saying lots of words in English and they all make sense, but then I kind of get a little confused about the, the, the whole notion about why this is so different than everything we've done before and why you think it's going to be such a massive sea change in the way that business is done. It has the potential to be disruptive because basically it guarantees trust between two entities which don't need to trust each other. Right. So it creates an electronic middleman like a bank used to be, like companies like Uber used to be, or still are. Right. But they basically, uh, blockchain creates that trust between two entities so that there is a potential to disrupt what traditionally has been a third party. Right. And obviously with a third party, there's a third party cost. 
So when we are talking about cryptocurrencies in particular, um, that way I can do a deal with some guy in Latvia somewhere. And because of the blockchain technology, that trust is inherently built in. So I don't need to know or have ever heard of that human being before in order to be assured that that transaction is going to be safe. That's correct, but also any any transaction, doesn't have to be on a cryptocurrency right. basis, any, any transaction, it could be the authentication of a digital asset for a hotel room picture, mm -hmm. for example. That could have um, uh, evidence that it's, uh, it's not been changed in any way, that it's a digital asset, then it's authenticated. But the big thing potentially could be more frictionless travel. Right. So I have my passport, I have my visa, I have my boarding pass. Each time I need to go through a certain uh, pathway, pathway through my transportation from home to my destination, mm -hmm. I have to get my phone out, I have to get my paper out, my passport, my visa. With blockchain, the World Economic Forum is already doing some advanced work with many governments and many big travel and hospitality organizations to basically make this whole thing much more frictionless, which is ob obviously what everybody wants. Oh, so that's interesting. So theoretically, it might just ease movement of travel, make it a lot easier for me to get around, less of a hassle. I'm hoping you can find out a way to use blockchain to get me through TSA quicker. That's right. Well, <laughs> maybe not that one. But, <laughs> I, think, I think TSA Pre is, is pretty good on it. I think I'm just thankful for it. But um, I mean, in, in, seri in all seriousness, I mean, that data is uh, being recognized now by governments. It's already been recognized by commercial organizations. We, as Data Art, do a lot of work for uh, banks and, um, and, and other financial institutions, and, uh, and governments are really taking, on, taking, taking this technology on board. So why are banks getting behind this? Because when it comes to the cryptocurrency thing, I would think they would feel threatened. Well, in the, but think about it, in travel and hospitality, if we don't do something about it, we're going to be let, get left right. behind as well. So the sessions that are, all of these trade shows are organizing for education purposes are really to try and make sure that people know that it exists, it's going to be around the corner, it's not going away. Hundreds of millions of dollars being raised every year, hundreds of millions of dollars being invested every year uh, in blockchain, in blockchain technology. It's not going away. We have to get on board with it. And they have to start, you know, organizations have to start learning about it and figuring out how they can get, to, get on board. So where did this technology come from and why is all of a sudden did it burst into the consciousness? Well, it's actually not that new. It is, it, the concept was established in 2008 to support uh, crypt, uh, cryptocurrency. And then basically it needed, uh, ever, there, need, there needed to be a way to make sure that a, a particular cryptocurrency, a crypto coin, wasn't used in two places at right. one time. So it, you have guarantee that once a transaction is spent, once a, a Bitcoin is, is spent, it's spent. Right, so what are you most excited about in terms of the potential for Bitcoin technology for uh, travel and hospitality? Anything that you're really excited about? I think there's going to be some small, I think you'll see in the next 12 to 24 months some proof of concepts coming out in the travel and hospitality world as they already have been uh, launched in other sectors, particularly, uh, particularly banks and, and finance areas. Uh, we're doing some work with, with that and we're seeing our other, our other, the other sectors we're going from proof of concept in pilot mode, so I think that's going to be happening in the next two or three years in travel and hospitality too. Excellent. Uh, anything else that we've left out? I feel like uh, I feel like we've covered it. You know what? People just need to get on board and start learning about um, yep. blockchain and understanding it. And um, there's lots of companies out there that can help. Excellent. So I'm curious as to what you all think about blockchain and how you think it's going to change the way that we all do business and travel within uh, the future. Man, that was really, really fascinating. I think I understand it now, but we'll see once we turn off these cameras if I'm equally as confident then. <laughs> <laughs> so for Andrew and myself, Glenn, thanks for watching Here to Stay TV, powered by Bridge Street.